problem with the one that I have is it does one thing. It doesn't do anything else. This does a whole bunch of things. You can make pasta with it, make your nut butters with it, and you do all kinds of cool things with it. All right? So that's juicer. Okay. Okay? So how do you use these sprouts? Um, we put them in, so we are addicted to sprouts. We put sprouts in everything. So we, if we have salad, we do sprouts. If we have soup, we put sprouts in there. If we do, um, we eat sprouts at every meal. Um, as I mentioned, if I have sandwiches, which is rare, we don't eat that much bread in sandwiches. Um, but if we do, we put sprouts in them. Um, we don't cook with them because we want to kill them. Yeah. Um, if you're going to have a hot chili, for example, put the sprouts in right at the end. So when your chili's cooked and you're about ready to serve it, and you put the sprouts in there, so now I can get a high temperature from the, the cooking. Um, but we put them in everything. Or you can juice them, right? So if you if you really want to get tons and tons of nutrition, then you juice them. Juice the little guys. Yeah. Right, so you can do anything you want. And you can certainly, um, if you want to make hummus, then you can do your, um, your chickpeas or whatever, mm -hmm. and then grind them up and make a raw hummus, fantastic. I'm going to have right. that later. You're going to have oh, some raw hummus later? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a fantastic way to do hummus. Um, I love, so there's red lentils somewhere over there. So the other night I did, um, yeah. How are you making hummus out of what? So you sprout your chickpeas. A uh, chickpea, yeah, yeah, I you know that. You sprout your chickpeas, yeah, or yes. any bean. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you sprout your chickpeas, and then you just grind them up, and you're yeah. going to see how to do that later. Please. Okay. Um, last week I did what's, uh, it's kind of like a shepherd's pie, but instead of meat, under I did lentils. I saw this recipe on Forks Over Knives. Uh, so I sprouted my lentils, so I, I don't know. So I got the lentils, sprouted them, and then I put them in the, in the thing, and then I added my potatoes on top, <laughs> which I pre-cooked the potatoes, put them on top, warmed up in the oven, so you're not killing the sprouts. But it's just another way to use so lentils. You can you you can make hummus out of something else, not only chickpeas. We make hummus out of everything. everything. Uh -huh. okay. We do everything. We put everything on hummus. And then lemon and. The yeah, typically oil. our recipe is a bean of some kind, um, yeah. and then we'll add lemon juice, garlic, lots of garlic, yeah. and then flavor of some kind. And flavor in our house typically is cumin and coriander, uh -huh. but we use a lot of turmeric. We can talk about nutritional value of turmeric. We love turmeric. I, I eat turmeric every day. Uh, last yeah. night I was making a, a raw tomato sauce and a bunch of turmeric goes in that. Yeah. So you put whatever flavor you like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll do you know, Italian and we'll go oregano and garlic and, mm -hmm. and uh, basil and parsley. Other nights it'll be Indian. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on and on. Okay. And so whatever flavors you like, that's the beauty of this. So that's an important point I want to make, is never sacrifice yummy for healthy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't sacrifice yummy for healthy. Your food's got to be yummy and fun, otherwise you're not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So never mind people saying, we eat this because it's good for you. If it's not fun and healthy yeah, and yeah. yummy, you're not going to eat it. So make sure you, you're not sacrificing the flavor when you make making foods. Yeah. Okay? That's cool. Okay, I'm going to show you one more bean. And uh, you're going to see how to do uh, mung beans later with uh, Louise uh, and her sprouter. I'm going to show you the Hippocrates way of doing it as well. So these are bean sprouts. Here they are. Um, I should give them something to show them to you. Anyway, those are bean sprouts. Here, toss those around. If, mm -hmm. I don't mind if you take a hand phone one either. So this is a picture which I spent a lot of money on, dollar store, right? You buy three of them. Well, I recognize that. Yeah. So you buy three of them at dollar store, and then somebody's got to poke mm -hmm. holes in the bottom. So I took a drill and I made a bunch of holes in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's my strainer now. Mm -hmm. So I put in here one third cup of mung beans. So these guys, one third cup of mung beans in here, and I put it in the pitcher and I filled it with water. And what did I do? So I soaked them. How long? Yeah. Eight hours. Overnight. Right? So soak them for eight hours overnight. So uh, I'll just demo. So water goes in here. Right? So the beans soak. And then you drain the water out. Right? Oh, Water's going to drain out the holes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Once it's all drained out, let's pretend it's all drained out. Then I put my lid on here. And this one's filled with water. So remember when we were doing the buckwheat over here, I was saying put weight on it. Mm -hmm. So this is my weight now. This is filled with water. I just put the lid on there because it looks prettier. And that's right? just for the mung beans? It's for mung beans. This is just mung beans. All I do, this is my mung bean starter right here. Oh. Very expensive. Cost me three bucks. Right? <clears throat> and then the what do I do? problems with plastic? They're BPA free. Okay. So. But they don't have BPS because that's supposed to be worse. 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> That's a good question. You're poisoning your beets. Yeah. So, um, twice a day, what do I do? Rinse. I rinse them. So I pour water in, I give them a little stir with the spoon, pour out the water, put my weight back on. And in, so these were started on a week. So in a week, you go from a third of a cup to that. Right? So the reason the weight is there is that you're going to get uh, bigger uh, roots than you would if you didn't have the weight. Can you just show me how you make the holes on the second one? It's going to be hard enough to water. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, yeah, I just took a drill and made a bunch of holes. Uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. And make the holes smaller than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of right? Course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> right? The holes are bigger than that, it's you're not, not going to have a lot of sprouts. Right? <laughs> so that's your guide. Make the small holes okay. smaller than that. So the holes could be a little bigger, but that works. All right? So soak, rinse twice a day, put a weight on top, and um are you all right. So Thank that you. third bucket is your weight on top? This is my weight on top. It's filled with water. All the way to the top. And 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 you want to put the weight on the top while they're soaking because... Not when they're soaking. Right. Not when they're soaking, there's water in here, so the weight's okay. not going to... The weight will float. All right. All right. So when they're soaking, you don't need the weight. Mm -hmm. But once you take the weight off, and, or once you, take, once you finish the soak, then you weigh them. And the purpose of the weight is to... Because these little guys, they, they're, they like they're, they're, they're there under the weight. They're going... We're really deep in the ground. We may oh. need to make a big root to push pressure. ourselves back up. Okay. They feel the pressure, right? I see. Oh, I lost one. Five second rule. That's all right. <laughs> um, I don't like, I, I feel bad when one of these falls in the sink. I go rescue it. I feel bad. <laughs> and then you devour um, it. <laughs> yeah, and then I eat it. Rescue so Sometimes they're a little soapy. But a little bit of an oxymoron <laughs> going there. Yeah. So the seed coat is somewhat nutritious as well? That's a good question. So mm -hmm. the green part, uh, I think there's fiber in there. So what I do with these, they don't look as pretty. If you get rid of the green, so yeah. you can, um, there's, there was a thing there that I skipped past. So you can uh, de-haul them if you like. Yeah. I generally don't because, again, I'm in a hurry like everybody else is. So if you look in here, there's little brown bits, right? So the little brown bits are the hulls. So they're full of fiber, not a ton of nutrition. So if you want them to serve them to your guests and you want them prettier, de-haul them. So and they if, float up to the top. Right. So fill this with water. The green will float to the top. Scoop them off. Some will sink to the bottom. Take out your nice little beans. So if you're, if you're having a dinner party and you don't want the green on there, I think the green adds a little color and it looks pretty. Um, the other thing is we were talking about mold. So if you're doing this and you leave them in here for a long time, the brown bits will go moldy. Because right? they're dead. Yeah. yeah. Right? So you want to be real careful with the hulls, all right? So a couple of things I would recommend. Number one, don't spread as long. Yeah. Number two, if you are going to do the greening, you want to go to this system, yeah, yeah. or small amounts and uh -huh. de-hull. Okay. Okay? And how do you I was, I, Honestly, we've been doing this now for five years. I've never grown mold in here. Uh -huh. Never. But you don't do, how many days is like uh, staying inside? Two Usually days. three to four. Three, three, three to four. Yeah, again, how you like it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So for my wife, two to three days, we start eating these. For mm -hmm. me, seven days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Okay, makes sense? Okay. All right, what's our time like? Where are we? Maybe a clock? Looks like time. Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay, so I put this up here because I'm sitting here, when I was watching the, the presentation with Brian and Hippocrates, and he's talking about microgreens and sprouts and, and greens and things, and it was all confusing to me. And so I yeah. tried to figure it out, and I really couldn't. Because um, people talk about sprouts. What do they mean? Is it the plant? Is that a sprout? Because if you go to the store and you buy sprouts, you get the plant. So it's actually a plant. So it's really a microgreen and not, right? Where does a microgreen, when does a plant turn in, when does a microgreen turn into a plant? Typically they say when it's six inches tall, but that's just a guy. So it doesn't really matter what you call these things. So when you talk about sprouts, what are we actually talking about? In our world, we're talking about sprouts, and we're talking about microgreens, and they're still sprouts. It's the same thing. These, they're the same thing, right? So the terminology, don't get messed up with it. Who cares? Right? So I just bring that up for... If you get I thought microgreens go, were just a smaller seed to start with. No, it's a smaller plant. Smaller plant. It's a smaller plant, right? So this I would call a sprout. 
And this is what I call a microgreen. But they're the same thing. They were started on the same day. These, these came out of this jar. It's the same thing. Right? So don't get, the names don't really mean a lot. Right? Mm -hmm. So I just put it up there to just kind of make that point that don't get caught up on that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to the fermentation. Okay. Um, this is one of the greatest best kept secrets. Well, sprouting is the best kept secret. Fermentation is number two. Uh, why? Because it allows you to do all kinds of really cool things. Um, so, typically vegetable and water kefir is what we ferment in our house. Yes, you can make kombucha, which I used to do, and I didn't. I found it didn't have the time. I found it was too hard for me to do it. There's ways you can do it, and I don't want to say kombucha is bad. Um, I just don't do it. So I'm telling you what I do. So we, I do vegetables and, and water kefir. And I forgot to bring my veggies. I had some sprouted stuff that I was going to bring you, which was amazing. Um, and I'll talk about it. So uh, why sprout? Or why, um, why ferment? Number one reason is probiotics. Number two, it's a method to preserve your bounty. So if you are a gardener and you get all kinds of cool things in the fall, you can preserve your food. Number three, it's easy, it's cheap. And number four, or number five, the most important thing is it's yummy. It's just another way to add flavor and fun to your food. And to transform food, um, it's just, it, I find it just really entertaining that I can take one thing and make it to something completely different. Um, and again, adds flavor and fun to our, our life. So we tend to, we, we try to eat some type of fermented food every day, uh, whether it's in the form of a drink or in the form of something we're putting on our, usually salad or other foods, okay? So that's why you should ferment. This whole idea of taking probiotics in a tablet uh, is crazy. So where where do probiotics come from? How come they're new now? I first heard of probiotics about, oh, uh, seven or eight years ago, I was at a, a doctor meeting, and one of the pharmacists said, oh, there's this new thing called probiotics. Really? <laughs> new, new thing. Okay. Anyway, so she talked about it, and I kind of went, yeah, whatever, conclude that idea, until I learned that I could make my own probiotics. So probiotics have been around forever. Part of the problem nowadays is that we're in a culture of cleanliness, which is good, but it's also bad, because you don't eat dirt anymore. Um, and you need to replenish the probiotics in your, in, your, in your body. You need to constantly feed those guys. So two points that we have to make. Number one, putting probiotics in here doesn't mean that you're going to get probiotics in here. Mm -hmm. That's really important to know. Okay? So if you go out and buy a tablet of probiotics, um, and you look at the entire bottle, compared to my sauerkraut, two tablespoons of my sauerkraut is going to have the same probiotics as a whole bottle. Mm -hmm. now, a whole bottle you're going to pay 60 bucks for, or whatever. The ta two tablespoons of sauerkraut you're going to pay, what, two cents for? Because mm -hmm. sauerkraut, because cabbage is what, 99 cents a pound, right? It's the cheapest vegetable out there. And with one cabbage you can make, you can make two oh, jars at least of sauerkraut, yeah. right, mm -hmm. uh, with one cabbage. So it's cheap and, and it's fun and you're getting more probiotics than, than you are getting the, the tablet. The other problem with the tablet is some guy in a lab decided that this is the best probiotic for you. So depending on which one you buy, you're going to get a different form of bacteria. And it may or may not be the right one. So they're starting to market these to doctors, just so you know the inside information. They're actually taking doctors out to lunch and saying, here, sell these probiotics. And the companies have decided that those are going to be the best ones for that situation. And they might be, but we don't really know. So I'm taking a chance on having a variety of probiotics and hopefully covering all the bases of what's coming from nature, as opposed to what some guy in a chemistry lab is putting into a tablet. Okay? So that's important. The other thing with probiotics is if you don't feed the buggers, they're going to die. And the bad guys are going to come back to life. And the other ones are going to hurt you. Okay? So let me explain that. So if we go out back and there's a, I saw the chicken shed over there, and we put a couple of bunnies in there, and we feed them good healthy food, within a few months you're going to have a shed full of bunnies because you're feeding them good food, right? But if we go in there and we put a couple of bunnies in there and we feed them pork rinds, um, they're probably going to die. So you can put two bunnies back in there and feed them pro uh, uh, pork rinds and they're probably going to die, and you just keep adding bunnies. And you'll always have two bunnies because you keep adding bunnies. <laughs> so probiotics is the same idea. You can keep taking probiotics, but if you're not feeding them healthy food, they're going to die. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a really important point. What do you feed probiotics? Well, we have a new term for that. It's called prebiotics. Right? <laughs> right? It's prebiotics. So prebiotics is what the probiotics eat, uh, which really, bottom line, is fiber. So if you're not feeding them fiber, 
they're not going to live. So if you're buying supplements and you're not on a healthy diet, and you're wasting your money on the supplements. Number two, the supplement may or may not be the right thing. And again, I'm not saying they're bad. But they may or may not be the right thing. And number three, if you're not feeding them good, healthy food, <clears throat> you're, you're just flushing them literally down the toilet, dead. So they don't live. I might as well make a point now. So how do you know if you're doing the right thing when it comes to feeding your probiotics? Your poops are good. Your poop. <laughs> your poop. And without getting too personal, if you think of your puppy and you feed your puppy, you take them out for a walk and they poop. And if you feed your baby and then for a while later, they poop. And if you feed your adult normal on a normal diet, they might poop this week or next week. <laughs> and that's not right. <clears throat> okay? So without getting into a lot of details, you guys can do the math on your own and figure out what your own bodies are doing. But that's the way it should work, is that when you're putting food in, stuff should be coming out. And if you're putting food in and stuff's not coming out, then there's probably a problem. Okay? Yeah. Do I need to expand on that? <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> message? Okay. Too much information. <laughs> okay, and then we were talking about before cleanliness, right? So cleanliness, I'm making a bit of a mess here, and I'm really sorry, and I've got a little bit of water on the floor. Um, so cleanliness is really important. So you want to make sure that everything's, so today I'm slopping stuff around just because we're here. Uh, but you really want to make sure that your jars are clean. Um, I like this stuff, grapefruit seed extract. You only need a couple of teaspoons per liter. I'm sorry, a couple of drops per liter. A couple of drops per liter. Yeah, did, did pass it around. Uh, so it's grapefruit extract. Okay. It's a way to clean your jars. Um, and it works great. Sometimes I use vinegar, because this I made, it's in the cupboard there, usually. And I forget, so. Um, and the jars tend to go on the dishwasher on the sterilized function on occasion, not every time, but so you want to be real clean with your stuff. Um, and when it comes to fermenting, it's the same kind of thing. So cleanliness for your jars for sprouting, cleanliness for your, your tubules for fermenting is important. Why? Because you don't want the slime and the mold and the heart from bacteria. Yeah. Okay? So make sure everything's clean. So vegetables. How do you spread vegetables or ferment vegetables? You need a source of sugar, which means pretty much any vegetable. You need brine, which is water and salt, and you need to add flavor. And you want to do it aerobically, so no oxygen, and you want to give it a bit of time. So there's pictures of some different ways to make things aerobic, in other words, no oxygen. Those are little nipples that you can buy, um, and allows the air to escape, but no air to go in. Okay, so they're cool little things. And I'll show you another way to do that. So the brine typically is 2%. Uh, by weight, uh, which means, um, and I'll show you the math in a minute, if you don't have enough, so if you say, well, I'm, you know, doctor said I shouldn't eat a, little, a lot of salt, I don't want to put too much salt in there, you can promote nasties to grow. So make sure you have enough salt in there. If it's too much salt in it, number one, it's not going to taste as good, number two, it slows the growth and, and they don't ferment as nicely. Okay, so what is the 2%? And the type of salt to look for? is uh, unprocessed salt. So we tend to use Redmond Real Salt in our house. Mm -hmm. uh, Himalayan pink salt is, is fine. Redmond's Real Salt you can buy anywhere. So Loblaws, Superstore, whatever. They sell it. It's not that expensive. And that's what we tend to use. So salt that's rich in, in minerals. So something that's unprocessed is what you want to look for. Iodide you want to avoid in your salt. And especially the, the anti-taking agents like calcium silicate. So you don't want that. You don't need that in your salt. Okay, as far as the numbers goes, uh, about 2 grams of salt, 100 grams of vegetables. Um, usually what I do is I'll take my cabbage, and when I put that's my cabbage, I'll do this. I don't measure it, but it's about a tablespoon to a pound and three quarters of cabbage, if you're going to do, or a vegetable, it doesn't matter which vegetable. All right, so a tablespoon of salt to your vegetable. And then what do you do? You mash it. So get really upset at your partner uh, or your kids or whatever. And, and then walk away for about 20 minutes and the salt will draw the water out. Then you stuff it in your mason jar, stuff it in there, and then you add your lid. So what I have at home, which I forgot to bring today, is I've got a lid that I've drilled a hole in and I've got one of these on there. So it lets the air come out and no air going. And then you watch the magic happen. Right? So that's all there is to fermenting vegetables. I just want to ask one more. Yeah. Uh, how will you clean uh, this with the, this one? That, I put two drops in the, in the jar. Because you talk too much. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going <laughs> fast. Too, too fast. Yeah, no, please stop me. Okay, two. So I put two drops in the jar. Two drops. And I, I put a bunch of water and I give it a good stir. Okay. Yeah. And then stir it and just... And, and I let, it, let it sit for a little while and then I'll pour it into the next jar and I'll give it a stir. That's and then two you drops use of the grapefruit. Two drops per liter of the, of the grapefruit. grapefruit. Per liter. Yeah. Yeah. And per you, liter. you uh, rinse it after? Mm -hmm. And then I rinse with it with clean water. Uh -huh. So we use reverse osmosis in our house. 
So I use the reverse osmosis to, to rinse afterwards. Yep. Okay. And where do you get those little, little um... So these puppies are from your winemaking store, <laughs> right? So it's, oh. that's right out of the winemaking kit, right? So the way it works is you put a little bit of water in here, and water left. Yeah, they're called airlocks. Airlock, yeah. If you're walking into a wine supply place, they're called airlocks. Airlocks. And if you know anybody who's got a wine store, just ask them if you can get one. Yeah, they're cheap. Yeah, they're cheap. And how do you put it on? How do you put that in? Yeah, I'll show you. Okay. So you put a little bit of water in here, yeah. and there's a tube here that goes through the bottom, and then you put this on top. Mm -hmm. So when the air comes out, it bubbles up, but no yeah. air goes in. Right? And uh, if you're using a mason jar, or sorry, this, this goes on there. Okay. If you're using a mason jar, what I've done is I've taken the metal from the mason jar, I drilled a hole, uh -huh. and I put this in there, and I put the cork on the bottom and cork on top. Does that make sense? Cork on bottom? So I made my own, right? Yeah. So I take two corks, mm -hmm. right? So I've got... So it'll sit like this, right? With the metal that I drilled a hole in. Or you can get the... Metal me mesh right. around it. Yeah. No, 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 not the mesh. No, not, not the mesh. Lead. Okay, the metal lead. 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 Okay, the metal okay. Lead. now I understand. Okay? Now, you don't have to get fancy. Okay. <clears throat> Typically, when I'm fermenting vegetables, I'll put a glass jar in here, and I won't worry about the air thing. So you need a weight to hold down your... Oh. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that'll do the same? That'll sort do of? the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you don't have to get complicated. Right? No, Let's keep it simple. Yeah. Okay. When I when I do is I put something like something round on the top of the vegetable, so then there's air space. Yeah. But then I put a rock or something on it, and then a weight or something. Yeah. Or bottle or something. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Right. Typically, I'll put a glass and there's a bit of water in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I really apologize. I was in the, my alarm didn't go off this morning. I was half hour late, and I forgot to bring my mustard. So. Um, what I did uh, for fun is at the end of the season I had a bunch of jalapeno peppers left over and I fermented them and I made some hot sauce. So I fermented them in a little mason jar and I took them and I put them through the, the blender and I just blended them, put them in my little jar. And then I was looking at them and we've had a hard time finding good mustard. So we love mustard. So we do mustard greens a lot uh, and to find good mustard without vinegar is very difficult. Um, so I thought, well, how hard can it be to make your own? So I took my sprouted mustard. Um, and I took my fermented things and I mixed the two together and I made like the best mustard ever. Uh, and I was going to bring some today and I really didn't so, so it's so fermented, it was, sprouted mustard. Right, so it was, it was combining the two things, so sprouting and fermentation, and how can I combine the two, and that's what I came up with. And uh, like I said, I have a little jar at home, I was going to bring it, and I really apologize. So therefore you so, don't need the vinegar, right? Because so you don't need the vinegar. Yeah. Why? Because you're getting lactic acid from here, so you're getting that vinegary taste. And then I added a bit of turmeric as well. Uh, to give it more of that mustardy thing. It was just so cool. Um, so you, you can experiment on your own. So, anyway, so why do I bring that up? Uh, I get Chris. I bring it up because you can play with this stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So my wife and I, when we go in the kitchen, we, it's playtime for us. You go in the kitchen and you play. And you mm -hmm. make up stuff. And sometimes you make things and you go, well, that's not very good. And you don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, right? And then if you make it and it's really good, make sure you write down. So we have, we have a little book that mm -hmm. will write down recipes that because we, we tend to create stuff. We don't follow recipes very <coughs> much. So we follow principles. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to give you today, principles. And then you just, you know, figure it on your own. Good question. Um, there's a, the gentleman that's next to my son at the market in Toronto. He does fermented foods. Yeah. And Eric bought a, a little jar of his favorite fermented mustard. And yeah. it's on the table there if anybody oh, wants to try okay. it. Oh, okay. And it's the it. same process. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, back to fermented foods. Why are, they, why are they cool? Because they're cheap, right? So if you go buy a jar of fermented sauerkraut, it costs you eight bucks. You make it for, you know, 50 cents, right? <clears throat> and it's fun and it's flavorful. And again, as far as flavor goes, you add what you want. So, so I put what, flavor on there, you add what you what, want. What, like any kind of vegetable can ferment? Pretty much anything, yeah. So what I've done beets, personally, uh, beets are fantastic. fantastic. If you like beets, mm, so instead beets. of buying those killed, dead, pickled beets yeah. that yeah. have no <laughs> nutritional value, so they have zero calories, so you're buying mm. nothing, yeah. right? You're buying vinegar, basically it's purple. So yes. if you do beets in the same kind of method with fermentation, they're fantastic. Yeah. And what I've done with my beets is I tend to spiralize them. 
So you're going to show how to spiralize. So you'll see how to spiralize later. So I tend to spiralize them, and then you get these stringy, beautiful beads. They're fantastic. Ooh. I tend to add onions to mine. Mm -hmm. So beets are great. If you love hot peppers, it's a fantastic way to make hot sauce. Is just take whatever hot pepper, throw it in the jar, ferment it with your brine. After about a week, you're going to have amazing uh, hot sauce. Jalapenos, I've fermented longer. How long? Until it tastes right. Yeah, you right? can do uh, cu cu cucumbers. Cucumbers are fantastic. Yeah, pretty much any vegetable. And you can do so kimchi. People talk about kimchi. Oh, kimchi is amazing. What is this? Fermented vegetables. It's just a mixture of fermented vegetables, right? That's all it is. As far as flavor goes, add what you like. So when I do cabbage, I tend or sauerkraut, I'll tend to put caraway seeds and fennel. Those are my favorites. Sometimes a little bit of onion, sometimes a bit of carrot. Depending on if I'm using yellow cabbage or the green cabbage or the purple cabbage. I'll add different things. Right? So add whatever you want. Add Whatever you want, there's yeah. no limit, right? If you like dill, you like dill pickles, great. Add a pile of dill to whatever you're pickling, right? Carrots are fantastic fermented. Zucchini, fantastic. So you cut your carrots, make them all pretty, or you alternate a carrot and a zucchini, a carrot and a zucchini, and it's green. It looks really pretty. Imagine you're on a budget, right? You mm -hmm. spend a buck on on vegetables, and you put them in a little jar with a little bow, and you give them all this Christmas present. People will love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? So that, like, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive and it can be pretty, right? So uh, eat with your eyes as well as with your mouth. Mm -hmm. right? So there's no limit to this fermentation thing. And the other thing, I brought a book too, uh, Making Your Own Cheeses. So cheese oh. is one of the, cheese. Cheese is one of the hardest things for people when they say I'm going to become vegan. No, I can't have my cheese anymore. This is one of the hardest things, right? So you can make your own absolutely fantastic, beautiful fermented cheese with nuts. So you're going to show how to do uh, almond milk later, yeah. right? And so the, the, the yeah, stuff that's left stuff. over after she makes your almond milk, you take that, you add a bit of your fermented kefir, and you just let it sit on the counter, and, and like you get amazing cheese, mm. cheese, oh. <laughs> fermented nut product, right? If you want to spread it on your bagel, it's way better than the, the milk stuff. So there's a whole new world out there <laughs> of fermentation, yeah. which is mm. fantastic. And the thing is, it's been around for as long as humans have been around, since wheat was invented, right? Right. Just that we've lost it in our culture because, you know, we like to sterilize everything, right? If you want to try fermented sauerkraut, uh, which is not with vinegar, make sure you buy the unpasteurized sauerkraut. It's going to cost you 10 bucks for a jar, and you can try it in stores. <clears throat> There's a new one called uh, Wild Brine. You've seen Wild Brine? So if you shop at Almost Perfect like I do, Wild Brine, you get the little jars about this big for about two fifty. I just saw it on sale at Superstore yesterday. It was eight fifty on sale. Oh, jeez. So it's like a half a uh, mason jar, right? Anyway, so that's sour fruit. Or fermented vegetables. Mm. So does vinegar promote Gut health, or does it vinegar kills things? Kills. Okay. Vinegar just kills things. So again, as as, as, no, as, no, as, right, well, well, yeah. as graduates of Hippocrates, when you go to Hippocrates, there's no vinegar on okay. site of any kind. Mm -hmm. Those things exist. Why? Because it kills digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. So again, back to the eating the food, you want to get that nutritional value of the food. If you're putting vinegar on your food, and you're killing the natural enzymes that are in there. You're not going to digest it as well. So if you want to take apple cider vinegar or some kind of vinegar as a supplement, again, there's even studies showing that it actually helps promote weight loss. You take it as a supplement. So we typically, uh, we will make what we call an OGIS drink. So if anybody aspires to Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic medicine, OGIS is your life force. So we make a drink with ginger, turmeric, apple cider vinegar, some kind of natural sweetener, um, or sorry, not apple cider vinegar, a vinegar of some kind. Typically, we'll use wine video or apple cider vinegar, and then we'll drink it as a supplement. But that's on an empty stomach with no food. Okay? Do you have pepper in this? Pepper? Yeah. I Cayenne know. often. Oh, okay. I um, I'm not a big fan of black pepper. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I, I, I don't eat black pepper at all, ever. I haven't in seven years. Um, and that's a whole other topic. But if you look at the science, and you look at turmeric, you know, the absorption of turmeric, mm -hmm. it's increased by 2,000 times if you mix it with black pepper. That's <clears> why I do it. <laughs> yeah, so from that point of view, there's actually science supporting the use of black pepper. I but paste. Yeah, so there's science to support the use of black pepper. I don't eat it uh, because I think it's a bowel irritant, mm -hmm. and I've seen science suggesting that it can stay in your gut for as long as seven years. 
<coughs> so I don't want. I black eat pepper anything anymore. with pepper. I just cough and cough. I said if I have anything with any pepper, pepper, I just cough and yeah. cough and cough. Now cayenne pepper is a totally different. No, form. I can do cayenne yeah, pepper. Yeah, black totally pepper, different. I just cough. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I love cayenne pepper. I, again, I try to get some in me pretty much every day. So that's one of my. If you go to um, Michael Greger's website, he talks about his daily dozen. I try to do a lot of what he does, but part of my daily routine is fermented foods, turmeric, cayenne pepper. We tend to get cinnamon garlic uh, pretty much every day, um, and the list goes on and on. Sprouts, absolutely, every day. Cinnamon garlic, what, what is that? So, we're going to change topic a little bit. So, when okay. we talk about anti-inflammatories. What was the question? I, I mentioned gin, gin, oh. uh, cinnamon and garlic. Uh -huh. So, anti-inflammatories. Uh -huh. So, a lot of our lifestyles, and, and if you look at pretty much any disease, they're based on inflammation. And a lot of things that we do cause inflammation. So smoking, alcohol, yeah. animal yes. products, the list goes on and on, are pro-inflammatory. <coughs> Nature also provides a whole host of anti-inflammatories. <coughs> so the most potent okay. ones are turmeric, cloves, mm -hmm. rosemary, ginger, garlic, cinnamon. And when we talk about cinnamon, it's true cinnamon. So do you guys know the difference between true cinnamon and yes. not true cinnamon? Yeah. So if you go to Law Boss and buy cinnamon, it's mm -hmm. probably not cinnamon. It's like, kind of like the black pepper I show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you want to buy true cin cinnamon, which is called Cylon cinnamon, C-E-Y-L-O-N. So it's called true cinnamon. Cylon. And that's actually Cylon. Cylon, 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 Cylon. Cylon. tomato, tomato. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true cinnamon. Yeah. And so true, those are. True cinnamon uh, has a tendency to look like um, powdered chocolate milk. It's lighter and a kind of gray, whereas the false cinnamon is from China and it's very reddish in color. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it looks prettier. It looks prettier. But it's not as good for you. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, other... also, it's also oilier. You can feel yeah. the oil, whereas in true cinnamon, there's. It's powder. very, very powdery and very And light. if you get the sticks mm -hmm. and grind them yourself, oh. Smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's even better. Okay, so that's why those things, because they're anti-inflammatory. So okay. I don't want inflammation in my body. Of course. Right. So I used to have big trouble with a bit of arthritis in my fingers, and I used to take supplements for that. This is my previous life, mm -hmm. and I don't take more stuff. Wow. Well, fibromyalgia is a common one, and it's very inflammation-based. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. inflammation. Okay. Okay, so we're a little off topic. Let's get back on topic. Let's go to water kefir. So, um, <laughs> so I started off this morning with the whole gallon. The other half is in the back of my car. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh, Yay. No. Oh. Um, anyway, poor guys. They're, gonna, they're starving in there now. So, uh, kefir. Um, you need a scoby. And, uh, and the scoby, which is water, water kefir grains, which is different than milk kefir grains. Uh, clean water, again, we talked about that, and some sort of sugar and no oxygen again. So that's what you need to make kefir. Um, the SCOBY is what's called the Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast Cell in a Polysaccharide Biofilm Matrix created by the bacteria themselves. And the microbes act in symbiosis, in other words, they help each other to maintain this stable culture. And it feeds off the sugar that you add to it. And in return, it gives you lactic acid, can give you alcohol, and you eat carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so, um, I'm actually convinced that there's a little bit of alcohol in my brew, uh, probably quarter percent, half percent alcohol, kind of like the alcoholized beer. Uh, I don't mind drinking a bottle of this at work. Um, I, there's not enough alcohol in there that's going to hurt you, right? But you probably will get a little alcohol. So if you're at, against alcohol or whatever, then you might want to not do this. Uh, some people call it kefir and some people call it kefir. Um, the Germans tell me that, uh, sorry, Kefir, kefir, or kefir. Uh, kefir is probably the true pronunciation, but I don't really care what you call it. Um, so there's other names too. Um, when I was preparing for this, there's all these other names that people use to describe the same product. Okay, and, and if anybody's into chemistry, which I, I'm not, um, that's what's in there. <clears throat> so on the bottom of here is all those guys are sitting in here. Okay, they're floating around the bottom. So how how are you getting? How, how we can get them? I mean, the, these guys? Yes. Yeah, Mine online. 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 Do you have okay. another source? Uh, health food store. Health food stores. Yeah, a lot of places will sell water kefir grains. Right? Mm -hmm. Water kefir grains. So that's what's in there. So the, the lact, lactobacillus brevis is the one that's actually producing the polysaccharides. So when you look at these guys, um, I didn't bring my strain to show them to you. When you look at them, they're, they're, they look like little hunts of clear gel. Yeah. Right now you can't tell because there's cane sugar in there, so it's 
the little color, but you can see them floating on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that's the actual scoby in there. Oh. Oh. Cool. <laughs> And they multiply. They multiply like. They multiply. Like a milk. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they will multiply. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what's in there. If you're interested in the chemistry. Yeah. Um, so how do you do it? Equal parts of grain and equal parts of sugar, and then add a bunch of water. So the recipes are there. One tablespoon of grain, one tablespoon of sugar, one cup of water. I use in my jug here. I have one cup of grains, one cup of sugar, roughly. I usually use about three quarters of a cup. And I fill this, which is about 16 cups of water. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so again, I've got in here one cup of grains, roughly three quarters to a cup of sugar, and then I add about 16 cups of water. So that's, this is what I use to ferment. Right? And you, so what kind of sugar do you use? I use cane sugar. So cane, organic cane sugar. cane sugar. Okay, thank you. All right. And the grains are the kefir grains? The kefir grains, yep. And that's what they look like. There's a picture of them. Do you rinse, oh, rinse them, oh, oh. You rinse them uh, from time to time? Or? Yeah, well, I take care of my babies. <clears throat> so these are my babies. These are all my babies. These are my babies. Mm -hmm. So about once a month or so, I'll take them out of here. I'll give them a little break from the sugar. I'll give them a little rinse with some clean water. And then I'll put them back in the jar. I'll, and I'll, I'll sterilize the jar again, the container. Sometimes you get a little scum that starts to form. And then, <clears throat> so I do that about once a month, every six weeks, depending on how it looks. How will you clean that jar? Do you have that uh, something to... I have a brush that yeah, brush. bends, yeah, yeah. goes in there, yeah, yeah. and then I put my... This yes, guy, yes. Right? Give it a good rinse, really hot water, yeah. let it sit for a bit, pour it out, mm -hmm. rinse clean water, and then go over. Okay. okay. How long will the future grains last? Um, these guys are about two years old. They should last theoretically indefinitely, unless you do something bad and they die. <coughs> but so they they're pretty resistant. Like the they multiply. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they'll grow. And every once in a while, you can either share some with your friends or put them in the compost or I haven't figured out what else to do with them. But, um, yeah, but they will multiply. Okay. So you pour off the liquid and drink it. Yeah, so I'll show you how to do that. So um, how to do it? Well, you start off with a big jug. So you've got your, your grains, your sugar, and your water, no oxygen. So we've got a little bit on there, right? So it'll bubble up and it'll come out. I do that for about three to four days. Again, three days is probably perfect. Four days is probably a little too long, two days probably not enough. It depends on life, right? So what I do is, you can't see it now because I've handled this, I take a, a dry erase marker and I'll write the date on here so I'll know when I start it. So this was started on the 23rd, right? So today would be the right day to take these guys out. So the 23rd. Again, some kind of uh, air trap, and there's different varieties. Um, and they're there for three or four days. <clears throat> then what I'll do is I'll take uh, a bottle and I put on there sealed pressurizable, pressurizable container. Typically I use these kind of bottles because um, they're a little stronger. So I'll tell you a little story. So uh, about a couple of months ago, I was in the kitchen playing, as I usually do, and I had three pots on the stove here at my left. And I was here chopping stuff, and these guys live in the corner of my counter. And again, my kitchen's not that big. It's probably from there to about here. It's about that big. The sink is here. And these bottles were sitting there with the jug in the corner. And I'm sitting there chopping away, and I hear, bang, big loud noise. And I saw things fly past me, hmm. right? I kind of went, oh crap, I thought I had left something near the stove, and it got hot and exploded, right? And I'm looking around, and then I hear water dripping. And I look over, and there's water dripping on that side of the counter. And it was one of these bottles that exploded on me. So I, I heard about this, and I didn't think it was really possible, but it actually happened. Uh, and I'll explain to you what happened then, so you can learn from my mistake and not do what I did. So one of these balls actually exploded, and glass went 20 feet that way, went into my dining room, went down the stairs, the glass blew Like it was, it was, it was a big explosion, and I'm lucky that it didn't get hurt. Uh, but anyway, so it can't happen. So I don't say that to scare you. I just say don't do what I did. If you follow this, nothing bad's gonna happen. What had happened was we went on vacation. So there's a way to take care of these guys when you go on vacation. You put them in the fridge, give them a good feed, put them in the fridge. And they'll last two, three weeks. They'll be happy. So these bottles, with, which is stage two, went in the fridge as well. When we came home, I took them out of the fridge. So now I put them on the counter. Now they're warm. They're going to start to ferment again. All right? <clears throat> so and I wasn't really thinking. And they were there for about a week. So longer than they should be. And the pressure built up, and off you go, right? So, so just a word of caution. Follow this, nothing bad's gonna happen. 
if you cheat like I did, you can get into trouble. So but it's the only time that's ever happened. But is the solution happen. just to unlock it and let some of the pressure? You can burp them. them as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to do that here. Burp so it. I'm curious, <laughs> curious to see how much burp. burping we get out of those guys. But I think they're going to be it's a good batch. Right? And if you want to try it, we're going to caution you again. But you certainly can have some. So what I do is back to your question. So stage two. So number one here. So just to review, uh, a few grains, sugar equal parts. 16 cups of water for one cup of kefir grains. Let them sit three to four days. Now I'll take my lid off, and this is my system. So I have it all set up so I don't have to work hard. So I open my drawer, and I've got these hanging on little hooks. I take them out, and I add my flavor. So flavor, step number one, add flavor. How much? Enough. <laughs> what does that mean? Enough. So this is uh, frozen blueberries and organic strawberries. You can just chop them up and chuck them in there, or you can blend them. So I did a little bit of both just to show you. Why? Because if you blend them, it's easier to get them out afterwards. Mm. So it's less time, a little more time to make it, but less time when you're trying to wash your bottles. So if you have chunks of fruit in here, you can't get them out. So blending makes that part of easier. But sometimes I'll just grab bananas and I'll just mush them in there. All right, hunks of pineapple, throw them in there, whatever, right? So blending is one option, and again, I showed you both. So there's whole blueberries and blended strawberries and that. So add flavor, so I add about that much. That's what I like in my flavor. You can do any flavor you want. Ginger and lemon is fantastic, right? Figs are great. So these guys, my, my guys really <laughs> love figs. I'm going to give them now. So they love figs. So if I can do ginger and lemon, I'll add a little bit of fig or an apricot or something to give it a little extra sugar so it will ferment a second time. Uh, but add some kind of flavor, okay? The, whatever you like. And you're going to do some. So my wife, when I do bananas and, and um, I do bananas and pineapple, typically, she opens and goes, oh, it smells like barf again. Why don't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, right? Find flavors that you guys like. Um, it doesn't matter what you use. So if you add your flavor, so I do this, I pour out my fluid, and I use a little strainer so that the little guys don't fall in here, right? Just pour it, and I fill it to about there, and then tight lid. I don't like wine bottles. They don't seem to seal as well as gold bottles. I just find that the carbon dioxide it tends, tends to get lost. The, the wine store that I get a lot of supplies from, they sell these little things called rabbits. Rabbits? Rabbits, and it's a little cork, uh -huh. and it's got ridges around it, so they will fit into various size bottles with the, the uh, yeah. mouth on it, mm -hmm. and they seal quite nice, and when things start fermenting, instead of the bottle going exploding, they push the top off, mm -hmm. the top of will kaboom, like a corkscrew. Cork like and a they, wine. Work, they yeah. work really well for this fermented stuff. Yeah, and well, that's where you go. I like to trap the carbon dioxide, because it's part of the fun of drinking it, because you get a fizzy drink. Uh, when you're done. So, how long do they stay in here? About three days. So, this has been three days in here. If you're gonna sit longer, then put them in the fridge. And you can keep them probably for a month in the fridge, and they'll be fine. <clears throat> but it took me three days. So, we typically make three bottles this size out of here. I'll get three bottles um, about twice a week. And we typically will drink a bottle a day each, my wife and I. It's typically what we go through. Uh, and that, those guys keep us, we have lots of stuff. You know, again, it's not every day, sometimes you take half a bottle, sometimes I'll make little bottles if you buy in the store, right, this size. Uh, so whatever you have, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? So if you're going to use these kind of bottles, like if you buy kombucha or kefir, or, or this is from Electric Juice Company, um, you want to replace the lids because they tend to wear out, but the bottles last forever. <coughs> Same thing with these little rubbers, you want to replace those with this one. Okay? So questions. So what's the benefit of prefer? The probiotics, okay. number one. Number two, it's fun. <laughs> really, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't drink pop. I don't drink yeah. fizzy drinks. I don't drink ginger ale. I won't drink sugary drinks. Mm. This is fun. Do you have I, any sample? I mean, to try it? Well, if you want to try it, we're going to talk about it. Um, okay. I'm going to try to open it, make sure I don't make a mess. Um, yeah, so you can certainly try it. Um, so, yeah. it satisfies me and the other thing that I find it takes away my hunger mm -hmm. so if I'm in the middle of the day it's like 10 o'clock I haven't had breakfast I'm, mm -hmm. I've seen 25 patients I'm getting hungry I'll drink half of this and I won't have, it'll take away my hunger mm -hmm. so and it's fun so it's fun it's tasty healthy probably right? it's a, like anti -inflammatory. Said, it's tasty. 
Hmm? It's it tasty. It's yeah. Like a, yeah, it's a fun drink. How about, again, you make whatever how about sugar drink. content? I mean, if somebody's Good question, healthy, right? yeah. So it's the amount a of one sugar thing here is very little. Mm -hmm. You're probably less less than ten percent of what you started with because the bacteria are eating the sugar, mm -hmm. right? And if you leave it longer, it's going to start turning to vinegar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that sweet spot, and again, those numbers okay. seem to work for my guys. Okay, but the sugar is pretty much all gone. The second sugar is for coming from the fruit. Okay, so the first sugar in here, if we measure the sugar content of this after three days fermentation, it's almost zero. Mm -hmm. and it's very low. So, so here you're getting natural sugar. Refreshing. Refreshing. It's, a, it's a refreshing drink, yeah. So if it's cold, it's more fun to drink as well. Do you ever drink it just natsu, natural, with no flavor? No flavor? Do you ever drink like? Well, I haven't. No. I guess you I could. I was curious. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. you could. The thing is, if you add the flavor, so the idea of adding the flavor is twofold. One, flavor plus sugar plus carbon dioxide. So the second fermentation allows us to make a fizzy drink. Mm -hmm. So if you don't make it, if you don't mm -hmm. ferment the second time, you don't get the fizzy. I find the fizzy's fun. The fizzy's fun. <laughs> <coughs> right? Tickles the belly. Tickles the belly. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically, it's basically a probiotic. It's basically a probiotic. It's a fun probiotic drink that, yeah. I'm just getting ready just in case, because today has <laughs> been a messy day, so. Um, we've got lots and lots. What's that? We've got lots and lots of yeah. As long as it doesn't hit the ceiling, eh? <laughs> oh. Whoops, no. there goes. Yeah, so we'll let that sit for a minute. <laughs> so, okay, so um, obviously I take this to work. And, uh, oh, that's a good one. Obviously I take these to work, right? So one day I was sitting there drinking this, and one of the nurses comes in and she says, oh, what are you drinking? I said, oh, water for fear. She says, oh, what, is, what's, what does it taste like? I said, oh, it tastes really good. Do you want to try some? And I explained to her, you know, I'm homemade, and it's been fermenting, and it's fizzy, and it's fun to drink. And she goes, yeah, I'll try some. So I gave her a little cup to drink, and she goes, oh, that's really good. She drank it. Yeah. The next day, she came back, and she had this horrible scowl on her face, <laughs> right? And I said, what's wrong? She says, I hate you. And I said, <laughs> Why? Yeah. And she says, I drank that stuff, and I got in my car and drove home, and I just almost didn't make it. I got <laughs> home, and I charged over my husband, I had made a beeline for the bathroom, and I just made it in time. She says, I've never been so cleaned up in my life. <laughs> I said, well, you should be thanking me. <laughs> Not cursing me. Right? Oh my so anyway, I thought, well, whatever, she's crazy. Um, right? Can't be true. Um, so then... About a week or two later, um, the same thing happened. There was a different nurse, and she came in, and, she, and same story, exactly the uh -huh. same thing. Same place, same, same thing. And her name's Erica, and, um, and I was just working with this way. She says, remember that time you gave me that stuff mm -hmm. to drink? She says, same thing happened. It's happened to Lori. I said, wow. So if you're not used to drinking this stuff, so I, I, like I said, I drink a whole bottle. Uh -huh. I didn't start drinking a whole bottle. So if you want to taste it, taste it. But I caution you that there's only one bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Phil, I've got some of the little shot things. That yeah, so if you want to have some, absolutely. Yeah, try a little bit, and if it goes over well, then you can grab more later. So what's the difference between keeper and kombucha for health reasons? Um, that's a good question. So there are different types of scoby. So it's a different form of bacterial culture. I think they're complementary. So I went through a point where I was doing both. So we'd have kefir and kombucha and back and forth. So it's, it's just a different... Um, and the sugar issue for um, people that are diabetic? I don't think it's not it's an a issue. natural sugar. Right. So the second fermentation is fruit. So we can talk about that for a minute. So if you take, um, and, and juice is different than fruit as well. Oh, someone's going to get a blueberry. Ah, huh? that's a special one. <laughs> oh, there's another blueberry. <laughs> Two special ones. So um, if you take sugar and you get a quick dose of sugar without the fruit, without the fiber, you get a spike in blood sugar. And your pancreas says, oh, we got a problem, let's produce a bunch of insulin. And it produces insulin, but it tends to overshoot. So it produces a bunch of insulin, and then you go hypoglycemic. And that's when you reach for the second Mars bar. Been there, done that. Right? And that's what happens, right? The other thing that happens is your body says, oh, we're starving now. 
and it chucks a bunch of fat into your bloodstream. And that's one of the ways that it helps to promote, sugar promotes cardiac disease. So let's review. So you take a bunch of sugar, raw, just regular sugar, or juice without fiber. Okay, so you take apple juice and you drink it. Your sugar spikes, your pancreas dumps out a bunch of insulin, your blood sugar now goes back to normal and then goes hypoglycemic. Mm. Now you feel like crap, so you try to, you, you're, you get hungry at that point, you feel like crap, but your body in response dumps fat into your bloodstream to give you energy. It doesn't have a source of sugar, dumps blood, fat goes fast. Uh, and that's one reason why sugar promotes cardiac disease. Right? Mm -hmm. So a couple of those misconceptions, sugar causes diabetes and fat causes cardiac disease, they're actually kind of the opposite. Fat causes diabetes and sugar. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Ah, cheers. <laughs> it's very tasty. Yes, everybody cool. has it. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Not strawberry and blueberry. Yeah, so how much is alcohol delicious? is delicious? Mm. I think it's probably, That's again, 1%. from my reading, a quarter percent, maybe yeah. half percent. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess it, it depends on your brew yeah. and how long you let it sit. Yeah. So if you let it sit longer, It'll become like vinegary, mm -hmm. and I've oh, done that where I've left with some. Oh, I forgot a bottle somewhere. I use it as vinegar. Right? In salads and stuff. Yeah, whatever. Oh, vinegar salads. So, um, so yeah. So the misconception of sugar, diabetes, fat, heart disease. Fat causes diabetes, and sugar causes heart disease. It's one of those things. Right? It's a different road. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fun drink. Um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Talking. Mm. Very good talk. <coughs> yeah. Excellent. Learned a lot, actually. Very good. Yeah, this is something amazing. Something amazing. You know, I remember back home, we had some, uh, like this. Where's back home? Uh, it's uh, Bosnia, Croatia. Bosnia, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that we had somebody gave us those little cup. They was little bigger, like uh, see through, you know. Uh -huh. And we make uh, some uh, some uh, drink <laughs> like that. It's similar like this. With milk or was it made with water? With water. With water. And I don't remember now. I don't know what how it's called, you know. But a long time ago. Right. Yeah? So people will, you know, give you a little bit, and then you, they they are multiply. Right. It was interesting. It's not interesting. Big. Yeah, if you look at the history of kefir, kefir, I looked this up, and whether it comes from Egypt or uh, where it actually comes from, it was made, um, it was made with milk, typically, 